In this video, I'd like to explain how to calculate depreciation. This is the third in a series of videos. The first one is about what property plan equipment is. The second one is what depreciation is. And now this one will explain a little bit of a, more about how to calculate depreciation. So there are basically three steps to calculate depreciation. And the first is to estimate the useful life. The second is to estimate the salvage value. And the third is to choose your depreciation method. That would be straight line, double declining balance, or the activity level. Just some definitions here. Useful life could be in years or months. Um, sometimes depreciation is recorded every year. Sometimes it's recorded at the end of every month. Sometimes it's even recorded at the end of every quarter, every three month period. Salvage value is um, useful life is how long you expect to use the asset. Salvage value is how much will you expect the asset to be worth at the end of its life. And so these things do require some thought. But usually if you're spending a lot of money to buy something, then chances are you have an idea how long you plan to use it and what it's going to be worth at the end of that time period. So if we were going to calculate straight line depreciation, the basic formula for depreciation expense under straight line is going to be the cost of the asset minus its salvage value, that's how much you expect it to be worth at the end of its useful life, divided by useful life. And, and when you're using straight line depreciation, depreciation expense is going to be the same every period. Now, another definition I just got to give you in order to do this is book value. Book value is equal to the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. And that's the value that the asset goes on your balance sheet at. So let's assume a new truck costs $10,000 and the useful life is estimated to be five years. The salvage value is estimated to be $1,000. Therefore, depreciation expense would be the cost minus the salvage value, 10000 minus 1000 and $9,000 divided by five or eighteen hundred dollars so let's take year one year one depreciation expense is eighteen hundred dollars accumulated depreciation would be a total of eighteen hundred dollars and therefore the book value at the end of year one would be eighty two hundred dollars year two you do the same thing you book another eighteen hundred in depreciation expense accumulated depreciation goes up to thirty six hundred dollars and the book value now is going to go down to 6400 it's going to go down by it's going to be either you could look at it as 8200 minus 1800 or you could look at it as 10000 minus 3600 and the same for years 3 4 and 5 the journal entry record depreciation is always going to be debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation debiting depreciation expense increases the expense and decreases net income Crediting accumulated depreciation increases the contra asset account called accumulated depreciation and it decreases assets. And this is explained more in my previous video. For, for straight line depreciation, since the amount of depreciation is always going to be the same, the amount in your journal entry is going to be the same every year. Now, double declining balance is a little different. Again, we got to have this definition of book value, cost minus accumulated depreciation. And depreciation expense using double declining balance, which I'll just call DDB, is going to be equal to 2 times the book value divided by the useful life. Again, 2 times the book value divided by the useful life. So if you're studying for a test, you really want to know this formula. Assume the new truck costs $10,000 and has a useful life estimated to be five years with a salvage value estimated to be a thousand dollars that's the same example as i gave you before with straight line in year one the book value would be ten thousand dollars minus zero or a thousand ten thousand dollars so your depreciation expense would be two times ten thousand divided by five that's going to give you four thousand dollars so depreciation expense in year one would be four thousand dollars accumulated depreciation would be four thousand because that's how much depreciation you recorded so far and book value would be six thousand notice that this is different from the 
$1,800 that we had on the straight line. It's much more. In year two, same problem. Depreciation as shown below here. The book value is now 10000 minus 4000 or $6,000. Depreciation expense, therefore, would be 2 times the new book value of 6000 divided by 5 or $2,400. So in year 2, you're going to insert depreciation expense of $2,400. Accumulated depreciation is then going to be 6400 that's 4000 from last year, plus 2400 from this year, and your new book value is going to be $3,600. In year three, don't worry, I'm going to do every year. Year three is going to be, the new book value is going to be 10000 minus the new accumulated depreciation of 6400 giving you a new book value of $3,600. So depreciation expense would be 2 times 3600 divided by 5 or $1,440. So your depreciation expense in year 3 would be 1440. Your accumulated depreciation was 7840, that's 6400 plus 1440. Book value is going to be $2,160. In year 4, we just keep on going. And follow me till year five because something is about to happen. <clears throat> Book value was seventy-eight forty. I'm sorry, accumulated depreciation is seventy-eight forty. So therefore, book value is two thousand one hundred sixty. Depreciation of two times twenty-one sixty divided by five is going to be $864. So year four depreciation is $864. Accumulated depreciation is going to be 8704. That's 7840 plus 864. And book value will be 1296. That would be either 2160 minus 864 or 10,000 minus 1296. In year five, we do the same thing and then something very interesting is going to happen. So book value is 8704. I'm sorry, accumulated depreciation is 8704. So book value is 1296. So depreciation expense is 2 times 1296 divided by 5 or $518.40. So that would give us new accumulated depreciation of $9,222.40 and a new book value of $777.60. And that's where things get really interesting because we have a problem here that the salvage value is $1,000 and our book value is below $1,000 and you just can't do that. So we're going to stop now and we're going to do it over and say, how do we get to this book value of $1,000? So previously we had a book value of $1,296. And we want a book value of $1,000. So that means we would need to record another $296 in depreciation. So if you do this and you get below your book value, your salvage value, then you need to stop and just depreciate enough to get below your salvage value. Do not depreciate below salvage value when you're using double declining balance. Another method of depreciation is called activity level. And here, instead of depreciating over time, you're going to depreciate over activity. So the formula would be cost minus salvage value times the fraction of this year's activity divided by the expected activity over the entire lifetime of the asset. So let's again take a new truck, $10,000, and let's assume it's going to be good for 100,000 miles with a salvage value of $1,000. And let's suppose that in year one we drove 22,500 miles. 
the depreciation expense would be ten thousand minus one thousand or nine thousand dollars times twenty two thousand five hundred divided by a hundred thousand and that will give you two thousand and twenty five so your depreciation expense for year one would be two thousand and twenty five accumulated depreciation two thousand twenty five and book value would be ten thousand minus two thousand twenty five or seven thousand nine hundred seventy five let's go to year two in year two let's say you drove nineteen thousand miles so same formula again ten thousand minus one thousand times nineteen thousand divided by a hundred thousand miles would be a thousand seven ten and that would be your depreciation in year two accumulated depreciation would be two thousand twenty five plus a thousand seven hundred ten or three thousand seven hundred thirty five and therefore book value would be six thousand two hundred sixty five and that's how you would account for activity level depreciation so it should be noted here it's that each depreciation method that you use is going to give you different answers different amounts of depreciation expense in general a company should have one method that it uses for all of its assets some companies do have more than one that they use in different divisions but a company in general should have one method for the whole company or division that said um, whatever depreciation method you do use is going to have a big effect on depreciation expense and therefore it could have a big effect on your profits here's the journal entry for this year's activity level um, again it was 1,710 so you would debit depreciation expense a credit accumulated depreciation under straight line this is always the same amount but under double declining balance or activity level it's going to the amount is going to be different every single year here's a couple of other things to be aware of if you're depreciating one issue is depreciating intangible assets remember that intangible assets are long-term assets that you use in your business but they have no physical substance so there are things like patents trading trademarks and copyrights goodwill is also considered to be an intangible assets and intangible assets are not depreciated but rather the term that's used is they're amortized so what you would do is instead of recording depreciation expense for intangible assets you're going to debit accumulated you're going to debit amortization expense and amortization expense is almost always going to be straight line one little exception to this is goodwill goodwill under United States generally accepted accounting principles is not amortized and a couple of other things to know and when you're doing taxes in the United States depreciation follows a very specific set of rules and not the set of rules that I've gone over in these videos so what the IRS will do is it'll determine your depreciation method and useful life so if you have a truck the IRS will tell you what depreciation method to use and what the useful life is going to be and the IRS has its own depreciation methods for financial accounting generally accepted accounting principles in the United States you only have to appreciate the asset for the period that you actually use it so if you buy an asset on June 1st a brand new asset and then start using it you're going to depreciate it for seven months June through December if you have an asset and you use it at the beginning of the year and then you sell it on March 1st or let, then you're only going to have to depreciate it for two years you stop depreciating the asset when you stop using it thanks for watching the video I hope that you got something out of it and if you did then please click the like button below